Hello YouTube friends. I thought I'd make this little video on Christmas Eve. I've had a sort of sorting out sort of day 
Uh, all that video that's just gone before is about me uh, woking, woke up to snow. <laughs> so that was quite pleasant. Um, then I delivered a few very local little gifts to people, fed the hens and the goose. And then I've just been pottering around. Uh, I decorated all the city, the kitchen, the last time we were together, but I haven't, I haven't really done much in the sitting room. And then I, th I started thinking, well, it's nice to, it's nice in here. So I've lit the fire. First time I've lit the fire this winter. I put the cards up. a few little presents over on the sofa over there uh, and so Christmas Day then isn't going to be uh, just like any other day like I was expecting but it's actually going to be uh, it's going to be I'm going to make it a bit special it's different for all of us this year <laughs> I mean about as different as it could possibly be and a lot of people are going to be spending Christmas Day on their own uh, or in a very restricted way, not seeing family in the way that they would like to. And so I thought, well, I'll just check in with you guys and wish you all a very uh, Merry Christmas Eve. I, earlier tonight, I watched uh, Arne and Carlos, uh, who, oh, speaking of which, I've got my Arne and Carlos Christmas drink here. In this great cup that I got. I really like it guys. And tonight on the 24th of December was the last of their Christmas ball videos and I've been looking forward to this one because I knew we were going to get to see the folk costumes that they've been making and and we did and they were wearing them and they look exactly how I hoped they would. Fantastic. Really really beautiful. Such brilliant work. And Carlos was describing how it took three days to iron the shirt, this linen shirt, uh, which, you know, I'm not a, a big fan of ironing, not really. <laughs> so that was really lovely to see Arne and Carlos uh, reveal the last of their Christmas balls, which was all about the um, Christmas elves that there are in Norway. And they revealed to us all over the world. So I shall be on the lookout for some Christmas elves tonight, maybe. So I had a little chat with my daughter earlier on uh, and Agnes, who's uh, just an absolute joy, um, and Adam. And I was saying, she said, what are you doing tonight, Mum? I said, I'm going to make a video for the for the YouTube friends. Uh, and I said, I, th I was thinking that I might read them something. And she said, read this. So I've got a book here. I mean, all the books I've got that I love to read are all kids books. Um, I really, really like them, but she said one in particular, and I thought, if you would like, I'm going to sit here in my cosy, warm sitting room with the fire on, a few candles, a cat here, sleep on the back of the sofa. Guess which one? There she is, fast asleep. She's right next to the radiator. Even though the fire's on, she's sitting next to the radiator there. So I'm going to read. It's a book you might know, actually. Here it is. It was made into a film and Tom Hanks narrated it, I seem to remember. Uh, and it was a, a, an animation, very good animation. So I'm going to read you this, if you would like. The Polar Express. I want to say who it's by. Chris Van Alsberg, who wrote it and illustrated it. Some lovely illustrations in here. And it was written in um, 1986. So, um, yeah, quite a long time ago now. But it's a book you might know. So settle down. I'm going to read you a book. Martha said to me, I bet you can't read it, Mum, without crying. I probably can't. 
but we'll give it our best shot. On Christmas Eve, many years ago, I lay quietly in my bed. I didn't rustle the sheets. I breathed slowly and silently. I was listening for a sound, a sound a friend had told me I'd never hear. The ringing of bells of Santa's sleigh. There is no Santa, my friend had insisted, but I knew he was wrong. And late that night, I did hear sounds, though not of ringing bells. From outside came the sound of hissing steam and squeaking metal. And I looked through my window and saw a train standing perfectly still in front of my house. It was wrapped in an apron of steam. Snowflakes fell lightly around it and a guard stood at the open door of one of the cars. Then he took a large pocket watch from his jacket and then looked up at my window. I put on my slippers and dressing gown and I tiptoed out of the door. All aboard, the guard cried out and I ran up to him. Well, he said, are you coming? Where? I asked. Why? To the North Pole, of course, was his answer. This is the Polar Express. And I took his outstretched hand and he pulled me aboard. The train was filled with other children, all in their pyjamas and nightgowns. We sang Christmas carols and ate sweets with nougat centres as white as snow. And we drank hot cocoa as thick and rich as melted chocolate bars. And outside the lights of the towns and villages flickered in the distance as the Polar Express raced northwards. Soon there were no more lights to be seen and we travelled through cold dark forests where lean wolves roamed and white-tailed rabbits hid from our train as it thundered through the quiet wilderness. We climbed mountains so high it seemed as if we would scrape the moon but the Polar Express never slowed down. Faster and faster we ran along rolling over peaks and through valleys like a car on a roller coaster. The mountains turned into hills and the hills to snow-covered plains and we crossed a barren desert of ice, the great polar ice cap. Lights appeared in the distance. They looked like the light of a strange ocean liner sailing on a frozen sea. There, said the guard, that's the North Pole. It was the North Pole. It was a huge city standing alone at the top of the world, filled with factories where every Christmas toy was made. At first we saw no elves. They are gathering at the centre of the city, the guard told us. That is where Santa will give the first gift of Christmas. Who received the first gift, we all asked, and the guard said, he will choose one of you. Look, shouted one of the children, the elves, and outside we saw hundreds of elves. As our train drew closer to the centre of the North Pole, we slowed to a crawl, so crowded were the streets with Santa's helpers. And when the Polar Express could go no further, we stopped and the guard led us outside. We pressed through the crowd to the edge of a large open circle and in front of us stood Santa's sleigh. The reindeer were excited. They pranced and paced, ringing the silver sleigh bells that hung from their harnesses. It was like a magical sound, like nothing I'd ever heard. And across the circle, the elves moved apart and Santa Claus appeared and the elves cheered wildly. He marched over to us and pointing to me, he said, let's have this fellow here. And he jumped into his sleigh and the guard helped me up. And I sat on Santa's knee and he asked, now, what would you like for Christmas? What I wanted more than anything was one silver bell from Santa's sleigh. And when I asked, Santa smiled and then he gave me a hug and he told an elf to cut a bell from the reindeer's harness. The elf tossed it up to Santa and he stood holding the bell high above him and called out, the first gift of Christmas. A clock struck midnight as the elves roared their approval and Santa handed the bell to me and I put it in my dressing gown pocket. 
the guard helped me down from the sleigh and Santa shouted out the reindeer's names and cracked his whip and his team charged forward and climbed into the air and Santa circled once above us and then disappeared into the cold dark polar sky. As soon as we were back inside the Polar Express, the other children asked to see the bell and I reached inside my pocket. But the only thing I felt was a hole. I had lost the silver bell from Santa's sleigh. Quick, let's hurry outside and look for it, said one of the children. But the train gave a sudden lurch and started moving and we were on our way home. It broke my heart to lose that bell. When the train reached my house, I sadly left the other children and I stood at the doorway and waved goodbye. And the guard said something from the moving train, but I couldn't hear him. What? I shouted, and he cupped his hands around his mouth. Merry Christmas, he shouted, and the Polar Express let out a loud blast from its whistle and sped away. On Christmas morning, my little sister Sarah and I opened our presents. When it looked as if everything had been unwrapped, Sarah found one last small box behind the tree and it had my name on it. Inside was the silver bell. And there was a note that said, I found this on the seat of my sleigh. Mend that hole in your pocket. Signed, Mr C. And I shook the bell. It made the most beautiful sound my sister and I had ever heard. But my mother said, oh, that's too bad. Yes, said my father, it's broken. When I'd shaken the bell, my parents had not heard a sound. At one time, most of my friends could hear the bell, but as years passed, it fell silent for all of them. Even Sarah found one Christmas that she could no longer hear its sweet sound. And though I've grown old, the bell still rings for me as it does for all those who truly believe. <sighs> so there's loads and loads of readings you could do at Christmas, but I really like the children's stories best of all. I love kids' books. I really do. So a little earlier on, I was just checking some messages and one of my lovely patrons left me a link to somebody who I'm going to link to down below. What a beautiful little podcast. Uh, and it's always nice to find a new person. And this is one that you may all know already. I've just looked it up. It's called Fibre Trek and I will leave a link to it. It's not on YouTube. Uh, but I'll leave a link to it if I can in the description down below. And um, this link was left to me because very kindly uh, the, the woman whose podcast it is had uh, given me a little shout out, which is always nice, isn't it? So I'm going to return the compliment and give her one. She lives in a very beautiful place uh, and um, she's uh, very interested in knitting and fibre arts. So um, I'm going to cook some supper now. I'm going to have some roasted vegetables, uh, parsnips and carrots and potatoes with some, uh, just as it's nearing re getting ready, with some chopped halloumi on top, which will go nice and bubbly and brown. Uh, and that will be good. And so then I'm going to wish you very, very Merry Christmas and hope that um, with great imagination, creativity, and patience, we can all get through this thing and we can all come out the other side of it. Uh, vaccines being developed now. In fact, I heard from my brother that my dad's just had a shot of the vaccine today, which is amazing to think uh, that he's got that. So as soon as we are all, we've all come through the other side of this one and we can be more sociable, we'll remember back to this time when we were really patient. It's, it's, it's all about imagination, I think. If you've got the imagination to be able to find things to do with your hands. I'm just about to finish knitting this now. 
I'm going to cast this off and then I'll find something else. There may be some stitching to do. There's definitely the um, a few Christmas movies to watch. So take care. Merry Christmas. And I wish you all very well indeed. And I would like to say thank you very, very much indeed. Thank you to everyone who supports me here on the Last Homely House YouTube channel and all the wonderful uh, outpourings of affection and love that you have for what we're doing here, me and the cats and the goose and the hens. But it's just lovely to know that we're, we've got the, you know, the, the lime green sofa, which was just a, a thing that I made up one day. I love the image of you all there. There you all are. Over on the Facebook Last Homely House group, there's about 1,500 of you all sitting on the sofa, more. And so massive thank you to the admins for looking after that. Uh, the Patreon family have got their own lime green sofa as well. And um, so all around the world, we're all connected together by the simple act of creating something and by the, the, the patience that we all have to um, to just want to be kind. It's about being kind, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. You overwhelm me. Every time I post a video, I'm completely overwhelmed by you all. The subscriber numbers are going up. Subscribe if you feel like it. Uh, leave me a thumbs up. Put your notifications bell on because I'm going to be posting that video about Agnes's Christmas present very soon. And you don't want to miss that. <laughs> and uh, then there'll be some other content coming soon. So, but for now though, have an absolutely marvellous pared down Christmas. Look after yourself, take care, and I'll be back soon. Thanks so much for watching.